All right, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. And I'm going to read uh, this scripture out of the Aramaic version. And then I'm going to read Psalms 51, verse 10. And uh, we're just going to just let the Lord do what he want to do continually in this place today. Hallelujah. The Bible says here in Ephesians 2, 2, in the Aramaic version, it says, In these things in which you walked from the first, you were in them according to the secular life of this world and according to the will of the ruler of the authority of the air and of the spirit which is diligent in the children of disobedience. In the King James Version, it says the prince and the power of the air. And it's given reference to Lucifer or Satan. All right, in Psalms 51, Psalms number 51, verse 10, in the JPS Tanakhta, which is the Torah, it says, Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. All right, so today we're dealing with the uh, third mountain of influence into our society, and that mountain is media. Now, there, there are seven mentioned of, of pillars that build society. You know, that there are seven, there, there are seven um, titles, media, art, entertainment, family, religion, uh, business, is that seven? Education. All right. It's believed that these are society shapers. Okay? So there is no certain formula how these are given. There's, so, there's not a one, two, three. There's not a consecutive formula of how it's given. And so what I've done as I've studied and went through, you know, the word of God, and as the Lord gives me, the revelation that need to be given to his people, you know, I believe that the first mountain is family. And so we dealt with family. Because without the family being the proper tool that it should be in our society, we really can't impact society the way that we should. And so we start with the family between God and man. We moved in from the family to religion. It's because if we build a family, it has to be built on the foundation of what we believe in. And we believe that religion is something that's really strong that builds society, builds culture. So I kind of like toyed around within my mind about how, how would we communicate this today, you know, as I sought the Lord, whether we would go into government instead of media and begin to talk about government. But I realize something more now than ever before is that when we look at our society, there are many things that are lacking, but the reason many things are lacking is because of the type of information that's being pumped into society. And so we can't respect government, we can't honor government without understanding these foundational structures of how we are su uh, supposed to function in society. Today we'll go from media and we'll move gradually into arts and entertainment because they're kind of tied together. You know, I mean, we have media and we'll talk about media, but we have arts and entertainment, which is a, a, a culture. It's a, it's a, it changes culture. It changes everything. And then hopefully we'll move into government. We'll move into government because the government has the benefit of being blessed because we're here. Because we learn how to act not from the government, but from our God. And so you got a lot of people that's in the earth that's acting like a bunch of uh, uh, people that don't know anything. It's because it, it, it baffles me. Maybe you don't know the principles of the kingdom. Because when we know from God how we're supposed to act, we live accordingly in this world because God tells us to honor government. He tells us to respect the laws of the land. Amen. So we're dealing with media here. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 2, it says that we, we, we once walked the way of the world. It used the word secular here. We, we once, as humans in the earth, we're spirit beings, we live in dirt bodies, but, but, but just let's 
for the sake of the right terminology, we understand that we are spirit beings and we live in dirt bodies. We understand that, right? If you don't understand it, I hope you understand it now. You are not a body. You are a spirit. Right? You are a spirit. When you die, we'll see how much of a body you are. Your body's going to be left. The real you going to leave. We are spirits that live in dirt bodies. All right? But we are recognized in this earth as humans. Right? We're recognized as humans. We're recognized as earthlings. We live here on the globe. All right? All right? So, so when the world look at us, the world look at us from the physical aspect of what they see. Is that a fair statement? All right? The world don't see us as spirit beings. Talking about the people, the world, the other people that live in the we, we don't see one another as spirit beings. We look at one another as the human race. Humans. But actually, our origin is not human. Our origin is spirit. Because we come from God. And he put us in dirt bodies to live in the earth. All right. I'm saying all this because we're going somewhere. All right. So there is a way that is kosher or okay according to the world standard. I'm talking about a way of functioning, a way of living. We call it secular. We call it uh, 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 the common way of humanity. There's a common way that humans live in the earth according to the laws of humanity, not the laws of God. Because when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, there was a disconnect between man and God. It was Adam's ways more than they were God's ways because God's ways were different than Adam's ways. When Adam sinned, that had nothing to do with God. That was, that, that was not God's ways. So it was Adam's ways. So the Bible says that one man ways and the judgment of his ways was passed upon all men. So the way we live and the way we function is according to the Adamic nature that we inherited from the first man. If you didn't know, now you know. You and I battle in this body because of what Adam did. He was the first sinner. Are you hearing me? So his ways have come upon all of humanity. We inherited his ways with his judgment. Because he was, a, he was our father. He was the father of humanity. And we inherited that. So, when we meet Jesus, who is the second Adam, Jesus Christ comes in and, and, and he makes all things new because we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And when we accept Jesus Christ, we are born again. Right? We are born again, meaning that the Spirit, who is God, merges together with your spirit and make your spirit a new spirit. All right? So now we're not 100% focused on the dictates of the flesh, but we should change our focus to the leading of the spirit. And when we're led by the spirit, the spirit that we're led by should affect our ways of demonstration. And the way we live should not be earthling. The way we live should be spirit being. Are you following me? All right. The devil hates this message. I already knew before we got here he hated it. Because he's getting exposed. Even more. So, so, so the, Paul told the church at Ephesus. He said, you know, you guys, we used to function in a secular way. How many of you can say that you used to function a certain way? Just talk to me a little bit. Just talk to me. Because you got to be real with me. We're going to give you the word today. Because some of us still function in the way that I used to function in the church. And it shouldn't be. So everybody can't say, I used to be that way because you're in the church and you're still that way. So th there may be a problem there. Maybe a growth problem 
or it may be a salvation problem. It's two ways. You either ain't saved or you're still in baby stage growing. Or you're following me. So, so and, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking a long route. I'm, I'm just doing what God wants me to do. I'm just, I'm just out there. I'm out, I'm out there in space right now. <laughs> trying to figure it out and trying to stay grounded. So, 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 when we understand this, that there's a way that seemeth right to a man, what's that way? The way of the world. The way of the flesh. But the end thereof is death and destruction. So the secular life that Paul is referencing here to, to the church at Ephesus is a life and a way of functionality of the world, not the kingdom of God. What, what, what is the kingdom of God? Peace? Love? Joy? No, no, no. no, no, no. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink. But it's the peace, the love, and the joy, and the righteousness in the Holy Ghost. So that's a way of living. That's not a place. That's a way of life. And so we should have love coming from us. We should have joy coming from us. We should have peace in our life. We should have righteousness flowing from us in the Holy Ghost. We, we shouldn't live like the world. We shouldn't look like the world. We shouldn't sound like the world. We are different. And if they didn't tell you you're different, if you are a believer, you are different. You are supposed to be different. The square does not fit in the circle. I know you go to school and you go ever and said, nobody like me. Good. Jesus said they didn't accept me and they're not going to accept you. Now, in all fairness, there are people that have a level of respect for you because of who you are. There were some people that made an not roll with Jesus, but they still respected him. They had to respect the gift that he was. And there's a level of honor in that because respect is there. It's kind of like Brother Rocky. Like you were saying a few minutes ago, there are some people that don't like the cops, but you sure better respect the cops. When they say pull over, you better pull over. When they say stop, you better stop. So there's a level of respect. That doesn't have to do with the emotional function of liking. That was a good analogy. I just had to use the cop or the cops, you know. It's because people need to know because you understand that language. Hallelujah. You know, I can't be stuck in a scripture and, and not give people clear understanding of how this scripture is supposed to apply to your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, so we understand that the Bible says that according to the will of the ruler of the authority of the air and the spirit which is diligent in the children of disobedience. Now, Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, whatever you want to call Diablos, whatever you want to call him, all right? The brother, according to the word of God, is the prince and the power of the air, the lower heavens. That's what it says in the original. The lower heavens. The earth, the, world, the realm we live in. He's orchestrating, he's moving, he's webbing. Can I tell you something? He's not doing this because he's going to take over. Because I think some people got in their mind like it's going to be like this great showdown, a great battle. It's not. It's not. It's really not. Satan already know he lost. We're we not waiting to defeat the devil. The brother already lost. We're just living out the rest of the story. Jesus already died. Amen. And Jesus already rose with all power in his hand. And so as we walk around, we're dealing with a defeated foe. Yeah, he got smoke, he got mirrors, he got tricks, he got schemes, but he defeated. And you shouldn't be afraid to say that. He is defeated. 
Jesus conquered him. More or less showed him. Because he wasn't even uh, anything to reckon with. Jesus dealt with death. <laughs> he dealt with death. And the enemy saw that he was no match for Christ. See, the deal is, is that we got to stop pulling, trying to put Satan in the G-O-D, capital G-O-D class. We can't put him in that class. He already, Satan was an angel, y'all. A fallen angel at that. He had rank, rank, but he was an angel. Are you hearing me? So, he's the prince of the power of the air, meaning that he is the enforcer of the ways of unrighteousness through the flesh. Satan enforces his ways through us living wrong. How do, you think he get, how, how do you think he accomplishes his goals? When we do wrong and we're used as an instrument of the enemy, it's his ways be enforced through a fallen nature. How do you think you're doing it? A fallen nature is a nature that's cursed. It's a nature of destruction. It's a nature of unrighteousness. So the kingdom of darkness is a kingdom of chaos. It's a kingdom of destruction. It's a kingdom of death. It's a kingdom where peace does not abide. It's a kingdom of unrighteousness. So when you and I are unrighteous, we are promoting the kingdom of darkness. When we lie and we manipulate and we cheat and we steal, we promote the kingdom of darkness, but it's through the fallen nature of the flesh. And so our ways flood his kingdom. Don't you know that when we live unrighteous, that, 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 that is like you being the poster boy for the devil? You're not promoting the kingdom. And you're not promoting the flesh. You're promoting the kingdom of darkness, who the enemy uses the flesh, fallen state, to promote his kingdom. That's the reason we should push. Paul said that we should push to live and walk in the spirit more than the flesh because the manifest manifestation of the flesh is death. You know what the wages of being a sinner? Working hard to be a sinner is. You work hard for the money. <laughs> you know what the wages for a sinner? You pull an all-nighter at club something. All night. You sinned all night. You see, you 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 sin, 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 and you get your pay. We get our pay. That pay is death. I want you to think about it like that, because the next time you decide to do something, you need to think about it. You know, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory, and we thank God for grace and we thank God for mercy, because we all need it. But we're not walking around trying to be in sin. We shouldn't be anyway. How are we going to promote grace and we don't have fear? Because the truth and the understanding of grace don't begin with the reality of grace. It begins with the reality of reverence and fear for God. Because if grace... And reverence or fear are not married together. You are an individual of lawlessness that is promoting a super grace message and a law of lawlessness. Because you say grace is going to work for you. Romans 6 said, I'm just giving you the Bible. Paul says, should you continue in sin hoping that grace is going to work for you? Just knowing that God going to forgive you, you know. I'm going to do it, but God going to forgive me. You know. <laughs> Come on, that's a mockery. You know, when we sin and do something wrong, we should be heartbroken behind that. We should be like, toe up, man, like Jesus, forgive me. So, we understand there's a way of functioning according to the world, 
And there is a way of functioning according to God. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. So we're dealing with media. Media. Media is a mountain of influence in our society that we as the church must address. You know, I know a lot of people say a lot of stuff about Donald Trump and Twitter. They do. And we, we might not like his tone. And we might not like some of the things that he say. But honestly, the brother got a point. Honestly. And I'm going to prove to you that he, I'm not here to preach about Donald Trump because we're supposed to be kingdom representative, but we begin to get on a bandwagon of stuff that don't even amount to a hill of beans because we have no knowledge and we speak into a realm that we should even begin to have a voice to speak into. The way we talk about the president, if we talk about Pookie and all of them in the hood, the way they shooting the hood up and the... Come on, I'm talking to everybody and all, all the mocha people because I'm mocha. Amen. Yeah, you know, might not be famous. I'm saying, I'm, if we get on Facebook and talk about uh, 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 who, and I say Pookie, it's because the black folk is killing one another faster than anything you ever seen. And guess what? I'm not black. I'm mocha. I say black, but to be politically correct, I'm mocha. I'm not black. <laughs> Unless they lied about what black is. I am brown. I am African American. But I'm a brown African American. Don't get me twisted. Amen. I am African American. But the deal is, the deal is, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. If you get on Facebook and blast Pookie and Lil Jojo them, and whoever their name is, amen. I gotta deal with the people, y'all. I gotta deal with the people. I'm talking about the people gotta be dealt with. Hallelujah. Yeah, I mean, some of you, you might look a little bit light to me, but you're part of the people too. Listen. <laughs> you're part of the problem. Amen. I used to be part of the problem. I used to be part of the problem. See, see, that's the reason he didn't want me to get saved, son. I'm on the other side of the fence now, Brother Clint. I'm on the other side of the fence now. You know, and I raise hell for him over there, but I'm going to raise for the kingdom over here. <laughs> I was. I was lifting up hell. I was, a, I was a campaigner for hell over here. I was campaigning for hell. Now I'm campaigning for the kingdom, <laughs> the kingdom of God. So, so, so listen, listen, if we can get on all this Twitter, tweet, tweet, social media, I don't even be on that stuff. I scan through. I told my wife the other day, I said, you go through uh, some of these uh, uh, social sites and it's like driving a car through hell. I said, you got to stay off this. You got to stay off this. Stuff. It's just that bad in some circles, man. You got to stay off that deal. But anyway, y'all got me acting up a little bit here. Listen. If you use your social media outlet, all right, to address all the drama, all right, because Trump ain't killing nobody. <laughs> President Barack wasn't killing the Barack. Barack wasn't killing nobody either. It's us. It's the people that's abundant the government. People talk about what people put in people water and people spraying in the air, or whatever. You know, you ain't got to spray nothing in the air, even though it's true. You ain't got to spray nothing in the water, even though it's true. People putting it in their lungs. Puff, puff, kill. <laughs> oh, man, they put all this stuff over us. You drinking it. You know what? When I found out how they was uh, 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 making uh, malt liquor, I should have stopped a long time ago. I mean, if I had any sense, I read on there and said it was charcoal or something. It was putting poison in my body. It smelled horrible. Yeah. Malt liquor. I never seen no commercials of uh, no Caucasians or Hispanics. It's all about black people. I'm just that's type of alcohol. Black. It's, look where I'm at. You're going to get it today, but the point that I'm making here, I'm, going, I'm, I'm relevant when I'm going to say this. If we use our sources of communication that's been given to us in the right way as believers, then we can see some change. You know, we got all these videos and people knocking one another out and, and doing all this violent and, and provocative stuff. And we, 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 we share it. We YouTube it. We put all that trash out there for everybody. And you're supposed to be saved. All right, all right. 
I seen some girls one day beating this girl down on social media. I was like, man, they all need to be locked up. And you know what? Five million views. 100,000 shares. It's like, what is that with your daughter? That's horrible. And a lot of my Facebook friends I want you to scroll on my page and say, that's your friend, Sherry, and I will dismiss you. I got that much knowledge about Facebook. <laughs> listen, guys, listen. Listen. We have to change the way we've been acting. I'm talking to the church. I'm talking to the body of Christ. You know, because there are different stereotypes about everybody. You know, when I grew up, one of the things I, ta I thought about Hispanic people, this is what I thought about Hispanic people. Everybody Hispanic smoked drugs. That's what I thought. When I, not, I don't want to say drugs, that's a little bit too drastic. Marijuana. And you know why? Because growing up, Cheech and Chong was my image. And they sold it to me through TV. Because where I was from, it was like 70% black and the rest was 30%. We, it wasn't really no Hispanic people around. They didn't tell people they were Hispanic. <laughs> so that was my image. You know, that was my image. And then, <laughs> then as I grew up a little bit older, you know, I got a little older, you know, you know what my other image about black people was? Old dog. Old dog, not Snoop. That was, that was later. Old. Lawrence Tate. Menace of society. I remember after we watched Boys in the Hood, and then they came out with Menace to Society. We walked out in the neighborhood. I had a cousin that went and got braised just like old dog. <laughs> Sag, he wanted to walk down the street look like old dog. And that was, that was, that's what I thought about black people. <laughs> Honestly. It's like you start shaping the mind, you know. You had to be uh, Craig. Uh, he wasn't Craig then. What was his name? I uh, know he had a real name. What do they call him? Big Pookie or Big... Big sum anyway. I'm talking about boys in the hood. What was his name, y'all? I know the brother name was Ricky. They got killed at with USC. Doughboy. That was his name. Doughboy. My next door neighbor had a hat like Doughboy. He wanted to be Doughboy. And that began to shape our community. I was from a little small city. Boy, back in the early 90s, when colors came out, People didn't even know their colors in school. <laughs> and then they got a rag. Come on, I can say this, because I used to be wrapped up in that foolishness. You know? I ain't going to tell you what I did. <laughs> I'm saved now. You, you, you ain't got enough of the testimony. You got enough of the testimony. Already. You got enough of the testimony. October 7, 2000, I got saved. We'll leave it there. The statute of limitation don't run off everything. All right, I'm saved. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, hallelujah. And I'm living right. Amen. All right, so anyway, these are shapers to our society. And everybody's messed up. Because these are the images that they sell us. Amen. And all of a sudden, when you look at people, you can't think right. That's right. You can't think right. Because this is the image. I grew up in when it came out, love and basketball, and everybody wanted to be that boy Epps and that girl, whatever her name, the basketball players. Loving the game. You know, these movies create mold and mindsets, and people begin to function like that. You know, at one while, I thought I wanted to be Jack Dawson uh, uh, that was running around on a boat, Titanic, with a uh, old oh girl. Man, we sit in the movie and watch Titanic forever. We'll talk about media. I mean, we'll talk about entertainment later. Titanic. It's like it was fun, you know. They sold stuff to you. I grew up wanting to be Rambo. I would cut, I got cuts in my hand. I would get my mom thread and so not real cuts, just like lightly skin, so you can get the thread. 
You know, Sylvester would sew his stuff up, you know? It's like, man, it's cool. You know what I mean? I, I was like, I grew up, I was like, man, I'm going to the military. I want to be in special forces. I just want to go, you know, do the special missions. You know, I'm just leave it there. I was messed up in my head because TV messed me up. And then I saw Rocky. You know, I, I bought, a, I had a punching bag, man. It's like I wanted to be Sylvester Stallone. I would look at magazines and get fake addresses and try to send him letters. God is witness. We had a group of people we grew up with. Everybody had the Michael Jackson jackets that came off Thriller. The whole name, it was a gang. They all had Michael Jackson jackets that was made out of plastic with zippers that wouldn't work. How many of y'all had one of those Michael Jackson jacks? See, see a few of you, see, see? A few of you. You had the red one, the black one, Thriller. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> anyway, boy, Lord, what are you doing today, Jesus? <laughs> hey! So, we understand. Help me pull myself together, Jesus. We understand that we got a lot of problems. All right? And a lot of problems have been overlooked. They've been overlooked. The church has overlooked them. You know why? Because we're part of the problem. We're part of the problem. Because when we start singing stuff like this, people want to throw rocks because you're not politically correct. Say, like, what is he preaching a message like that on a Sunday for? Why? Why are you not preaching it? We're trying to sort out some stuff. We're trying to get people set free. God gave us the blood. He gave us the name. He's given us wisdom, and we still bow. So, there's a saying: the uh, the the um, the United Negro, the the the, the, the Negro, the, the United Negro College Fund. There's a saying. I used to watch the commercial when I was a kid. Well, not really watch the commercial. I just thought it was real nice that they had a fund, you know, to help brown people. <laughs> but they should have told me that before I got hooked up with Sally Maynum, you know? <laughs> I mean, like, seriously. It's like, why I didn't get none of that money? You know, because Sally May and Navion and I'm talking about the student loan people. You know, because now I'm on the other side. I'm 42, and, and, and the United Negro Fund ain't helping me right now because they didn't. They gave me high interest student loans. I would ask, how many of y'all got student loans? Don't raise your hands. Say, oh Jesus, too many hands. And everybody that raised their hand was proud. <laughs> hey, Jesus. Guys, we got to get out of this cycle. You know, we got student loans that we hoping that, we, and they talking about Donna going to get rid of the, President going to get rid of the Forgiveness Act. Man, wait 10 more years. No, six more years. Wait 10 more years, six more years. We almost eligible. You know, loan, loan forgiveness. Public service, loan forgiveness. We got a little while longer. You know, just, we're going to pray that one away, Donna. You know, thank you, President Barack. That was a good one right there. All right, anyway, this, hey, anybody remember the saying that would come on the commercial? A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Did anybody listen to that? <laughs> the devil did. The devil did. Because if you go back and you trace the origin of this saying, and you look at the strategic plans that was put together to control people's mind indirectly, you'll be baffled. And people are functioning on the basis of what people put in, the, it, it put in place, systems in place, to keep people functioning in a certain way. You know, thank God for welfare. I got my new nutrition from welfare. <laughs> I'm telling thank God. Boy, I remember eating, we ate real good growing up. We ate real good. I had a guy tell me the other day, he said, if you're homeless and it's your first time you're homeless, he said, the government will give you $500. I said, 
He said they'll give you five hundred dollars, and then they'll give you a you got to fill out for this deal. He know because he did it, you know. He said they'll give you a five hundred dollars, and then they'll give you a food stamp, and they'll, they'll, it's a one time one time fee, a one time five hundred dollar five hundred dollars, you know. And then you get welfare, and you can go in the store and you can buy food. He said now he said man, my friends, we can go to Taco Bell. I said people got food stamp cards can go to Taco Bell. He said, not everybody. You got to be, the application that you fill out, you got to be classified as homeless. Because if it's a special perk, you know, they recognize it. And so they'll let you go use your food stamp card in Taco Bell or one of these places. He said, yeah, man. He said, homeless people should never be hungry. I said, wow, that's a new revelation for me. I said, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, man. He said, we, we, we can, they give you enough money. To do whatever you need to do and you, you can work that deal. You can work it. It's like, wow, it's a new world open up for me. And then I remember all the people I knew growing up that was on welfare. And they stayed on welfare. They never applied for a job. Because at a certain time of the month, if you had enough dependents, you was going to have enough money to buy food and do what you want to do and live okay. Don't you know that's a system? Things are meant to help people get somewhere, but there's more people that's using it in an abusive way than a way to move up. I appreciate the government and all those people that put stuff like that in place. But the point that I'm saying is that, and I'm, that's not even what I'm preaching right now. The point that I'm making right now, that there are systems that have been put in place way before you and I ever was conceived. And those systems are being acted out in the life that we live. And we respond and we live based upon the system that we live in. And it create a certain culture. And people function a certain way, not even knowing that they were programmed to function that way to a certain degree. You know, and then they have all these neighborhoods. You know, they have the you know the neighborhoods that that everybody can stay in, and it's all lower level housing. And people say, "Well, I can stay there. I can just stay there forever, and I just stay there, and that's it." You know, and it turns into something else because a lot of people are using drugs and different things like that, and and, and it's just horrible. And so now we got a real problem in our society is because there was a system that was put in place that was abused, but they left it that way, and now we 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 just got problems in our government. We got problems in our nation. All right, so media. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. All right, so a mind is a terrible thing to waste is, is really, it's a, good, it's a good slogan. It really is. It's because when we really look at it, if we look at it as the body of Christ, we can make tremendous change uh, more than we've ever made before. It's because now we understand that this is not some religious situation we're doing and fleshly gratifying thing. This is an empowerment station. This is a place where we should be empowered. You know, I, I mean, you know, everybody here should be reading their Bible. Right. Everybody, whether it's on audio or whatever, you ought to be getting the word in you that way. All right? But when God gives something like this, a place like this, this place is supposed to be a place of empowerment, a place of enhancement, a place to take you further than your reading. So I'm not the expository Bible teacher. And I don't have anything against people that teach expository. I think that expository is great from a Sunday school of Bible study perspective. But this is another level elevated above what traditional Bible study would be. All right? I'm your mailman today. All right? I'm your mailman. And so, so God has given me the mail to give to you so that you can get whatever you need today. And you may not know that you need it today. It may be tomorrow that you need it, but God delivered your mail today for your future. Are you hearing me? So when we look at media, media is, it, the definition of media is an intervening agency. It intervenes. It is an intervening agency. That's, that's, that's what it means. It's a Latin word uh, uh, written straight from Latin. It, they, they didn't change nothing. It's a Latin word, and it means to intervene. It's an agency. It means that it is an instrument by which something is conveyed, communicated, and accomplished. It is a means of communication 
radio, television, newspaper, magazines, internet. And this is to reach and influence people all over the world. All right? That's the motive. The motive of media is to influence people all over the world. All right? Just follow me. So the media has the potential to sway popular opinion on current issues based upon its reporting, which is not always truthful nor accurate. Right? It has the ability to sway popular opinion. Okay? How, how, how many riots we saw over the last couple of years in America? You can't even count them. But one riot or one place that was out of control turned another place out of control. And then they saw it on the news, and then some brother over here woke up out of a slumber and, and decided to rebel against authority, and they started another riot. And somebody else walking on Hollywood Boulevard looked and seen the, the media telling their story in a TV, and some bird just stole through the window and said, man, that ain't right. And they walked down the road with attitude. And they started telling their buddies. And all of a sudden, an outbreak takes, takes place on the side of the road. Say, where you get your information from? I saw the news in that furniture store down the road on that TV screen. They didn't even own the TV. They just happened to see it at some furniture store in the window. But it had the ability to start a situation down the road because it conveyed information to the individuals. And everybody has the right to interpret what they hear however they want to. Everybody has their right. But most times when we interpret, depending on how you grew up, you interpret the way that you was raised. <laughs> so when a lot of, I want to say black people, because it can be any race. I want you to hear this. But right now, let me say black people. <laughs> because we got the most problems right now. Almost seem like it. You know, I'll deal with Hispanic people here in a few minutes. I, just listen. You know, I don't play the race card. Listen. So, when one black guy get into it with an officer, and he decide to rebel against that officer's authority, and that officer all of a sudden try to exercise his authority or her authority because they have the right to uphold the law, and all of a sudden that individual say, hey, you know, I don't want to listen to you. I don't, I don't want to do what you say. I don't, want, I don't want to deal with this. And all of a sudden, what happened? A scene breaks out. Boom. And an explosion. And they put it on the news. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you got one officer that's trying to do the right thing, but this brother or sister didn't want to do the right thing because they felt like they was being slighted. And you put it on the news, and now you got a race problem throughout uh, the nation concerning law enforcement agency and black people because of one incident that was isolated that was interpreted the wrong way. And then you got the Hispanic people over here, and the news flash and say, hey, Donald Trump is going to be president, and he's going to deport everybody that's Hispanic. And then my kids come home and say, my friends are crying at school, because Donald Trump, if he get elected, he's going to send everybody away. I was like, that ain't right. I say, well, there any Chinese people there too? I didn't say that, but I, saw, I said it later. I said, what about my brothers from Nigeria that's living here in America? And they, they illegal too. You know, I started throwing out all the different races because I know some people that, you know, that's not documented here that they're not Hispanic. A lot of folk. But the agenda that was promoted was toward one race of people to create a, a chain effect of actions in the nation. That's right. Because... A demonic agenda. And wrong interpretation. That's the reason a lot of people right now. I had a cousin told me a few days ago. One of my cousins in uh, Texas. He said, man. We were talking about Donald Trump. He said, man. He said, I was going to call you. Because I wanted to know what you thought about this. He said, man. What's wrong with all the black folk? He said, man. This man trying to help us. I said, that's what I've been telling everybody, brother. He said, I knew you already knew. <laughs> I 
I said, that's what we're trying to tell everybody, man. Quit being distracted by stuff that don't, wrongful interpretation of things can mess you up. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. So, if Christian people who are gifted, like I was praying over the kids, would, 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 would take their call and take whatever work they have and, and take it and move forward in a willing spirit to promote what's true, fair, and accurate, we can begin to change the world. Start your own, start your own blog. And let your blog be all about truth. Start your own talk show. What well, somebody say, I can't do it, man. All you got to do is get a phone and download an app. You know, you can start your own program. You know, just set your camera up, start your own program. You know, you can get more followers than, than the way they do now. The camera will be better than anybody's camera. Just get you a nice Samsung camera, one of those people that make real good cameras, and set that joke up on a tripod. Throw you some type of sheet up, a, a clean sheet with a nice color. You know, paint your wall green behind you. You know, have your green, green screen and go at it. Script your stuff. I mean, you'll do just, you'll do better, you'll do better than Bill O'Reilly. And you start, you start promoting the news and people start sharing you and see what happens. That's not my call. But if that may be somebody's call here. You know, it may be a five-minute blog, seven-minute blog. Do it once a week. Don't get overwhelmed. You know, keep it fresh. Let them be waiting on you. You know, keep it fresh. Are you hearing me? In 2015, one of the top media gurus in the world that produce a lot of our media, Google, Facebook. I don't even I don't even know where these people but do come from. I don't even know who is that. They're behind the scene, but they're they're number three. Yahoo, Yahoo News, Microsoft, all these media outlets produce about 19% of the information we get. This is huge. You know who else is, uh, is at the top of the list? Disney. Because Disney is not just showing cartoons with Mickey and Minnie anymore. I mean, Disney is everywhere. Disney make movies. Not just cartoons. Disney is creating culture. Disney is like a little demigod in the nation. In the world. Disney. Walt Disney. It's major. We have Fox News. We have Facebook. CBS. CNN. All these talk shows. And they're creating society. Talk radio. They're shaping society. Everywhere you look, they're shaping society. You know, people are looking for people that are going to be motivated and, and, and give you these self, self-help uh, type of techniques that's changing and moving us away from God. You know, you know what's really popular right now? The wellness centers. Don't, 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 don't tell me you've been to one. The wellness centers. You, you know what the wellness centers are, right? The wellness centers are these places. They're really psychics, really. They got psychics, wellness centers. But, but they offer uh, uh, meditation. They offer, you know, to, to get tapped into the next realm. You know, you come and you sit and you pay them. You know, you try to get, you get yourself well. You, you, you get yourself death well. <laughs> Is this the truth? So we got to stay away from a place like that. But that's what it's about right now, self-help meditation. Get into this zone and, 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 you know, break your legs, you, you know, the yoga stuff, you know. You yeah, break your spirit. You'll never get my leg here. Never. You know. It, 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 never. You know. Bend your spirit. Bend your ear. If you want to bend your body, bend it, bend it the spirit way. Break it that way. Amen. All right. So let me give you a couple of scriptures. To go with this. So, in Psalms 51.10 that I just gave you, it says, create me a clean heart. The word heart here in Hebrew is mind, inner will, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. 
Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Inner spirit. So we had to pray and ask God to create within us a clean mind. A renewed spirit. Why do we have to pray this? It's because the secular way of humanity has been bred into us by Adam and the news media is being used by the prince and the power of the air to keep us in for the bondage. Divorce is higher in the church. We're supposed to be serving the God of Israel who gave us marriage as a blessing. Are you following me? Are you hearing me? So there are different things that are being propagated and put into our minds before the full manifestation of the agenda is seated into the mind of man. And we function according to that. So the Lord, uh, uh, David said, create within me a clean heart. And the reason David prayed this is because he had fallen in sin with Bathsheba. And he was on the backside of failure. And said, Lord, how did I get to this place? How did I get to a place to where I kill a man, or, 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 or orchestrate a murder for a man, and do adultery, and be with a woman that's not my wife? How did I get here? You know how he got there? He might have not had CNN there. He might have not had Fox News there. Showtime might have not been there. But evidently, it was Showtime somewhere out there. It just wasn't Showtime, that one-eyed demon. They had the full-scale scenes. And he let stuff got in him that shouldn't have got in him. And that was a generational seed that was working in him that caused him to fail. So we got to make sure we, we ask the Lord to create in us a, a clean heart. Because you know what? When I was a sinner, I, like, I used to like doing some of the stuff I did. You know? And I know everybody gets, everybody saved, and they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. you did too? <laughs> I mean, when you didn't know, Lord, there were some things you did that you liked because that was a part of the fallen nature. Matter of fact, we, we loved it. We loved some of the stuff we did. We loved it. And we had to get that stuff out of our spirit. So when you sit there and you start watching TV and listening to certain type of music and, and feeding your spirit back with that agenda, before long you create an appetite for that. You know? You know, God broke you free from R. Kelly and all them people. And now, now, now you, you, you put a thank you lonely now tonight and put all that stuff into your spirit. And all of a sudden you're cultivating the mind for that type of stuff. And you're creating an appetite for that type of stuff. It's where you can't sit up and watch all these TV programs that they be putting out there. You've heard me say this before. You can't let that stuff just, just download into your spirit. You know, you, know, you stuck on Lifetime TV. Life, Lifetime ain't healthy for people. It really ain't. I mean, Lifetime TV, I mean, somebody always cheating on somebody and somebody always plotting a murder or something. And you know, you can't even trust your wife and trust your husband because you got all these episodes of Lifetime in you when the husband ran up on the wife and the wife ran up on the husband. And you, you can't even think straight. You got about 10 episodes in you. You got that much information in you, it's going to give birth to something. Remember I said about boys in the hood. Remember I said about all these shows. They create culture. And there you are scrolling through your spouse's phone and, you know, checking everything and, you know, just watching everything you can. And, you know, you be like uh, Inspector Gadget, you know. You can't even sleep good. You're waking up with one eye. What you doing? <laughs> Who you talking to? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's right. And it's the truth. It's because this thing get in your spirit. And when you let this stuff flood your spirit, you can't think straight. That's right. Amen. Give me a few more minutes. It's going to be real good for you. I can't give it all to you, but I'm giving you what I can. So he said, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cause my spirit to erupt with who you are. Cause my spirit to cry. Because I'm not an earthling. I'm a spirit being. And I want my spirit to cry out for you. Amen. 
You know what? Your spirit not going to cry for God if you're not hanging around God and creating an appetite for him. Now, God gives us hunger. But the more and more we hang out with God, you know, we get to the place to where we want more of God. It's like, do it again, Jesus. Touch me again, Lord. Fill me up again, Lord. You know, and we're chasing God. We're, we're in this progressive mode of going after God because we want the Lord to do even greater than what he did before. And that's where God wants us at. Ephesians, Ephesians 4.21 said, since you have heard about Jesus in the New Living Translation, since you have heard about Jesus and have le and learned the truth that come from him. Verse 22 said, throw off your old sinful nature. Throw off your former way of life which is corrupted by lust and deception. Lust don't just come out of nowhere. The Bible said that Eve got in trouble because what her eyes interpret to her heart, what was good to eat? Lust. She was crazy. Lust, lust, is, lust is a worship term. It's, it's, it's a longing. She longed to eat what God said don't eat. Read the Bible said, don't covet another man's wife and all that stuff and don't covet another man. It's because it's wrong to loan and covet something that's not yours. So God say, create within me a new spirit. Help me not long and lust after stuff that's connected to the flesh. If I'm going to long for something, let me long for God and long for what God has to give. Not my flesh, Lord. Not my flesh. Verse 23 says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2 says, my son, forget not my law, but thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall be added to you. You know, they say, hey, they're going to lock everybody up in these concentration camps, and they're going to haul everybody out. You ain't hauling me nowhere. And if I, got, if I get hauled off, you're going to get ready for a revival because we're going to turn that place upside. Wherever I'm at, we're going to, you, 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 don't, you don't want me there. <laughs> Amen. I heard somebody give a joke the other day. They, was, they said, man, uh, Greg Lowry, one of these guys, said, said that uh, uh, Billy Graham died and Oral Roberts died and, and um, somebody else died and, 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 and they, they, they died a little bit too soon. They couldn't get into heaven. And he said, okay, well, we're going to put them down here like in hell for, you know, for a minute until we get there, benching together, whatever. A preacher was saying this. I, I thought it was pretty comical. But anyway, he said, we're going to put them right here in hell. You know, uh, uh, they, they call the devil and say, hey, you know, these guys can't get in right now. We just need you to just hold them right here, whatever. And say, so he went down there and, and maybe a day or two later, they called and said, hey, you got to get these guys out of here. Said, oh, robbers raised enough money to get an air conditioning in hell and Billy Graham leading everybody out and you got to get these guys out of here. And I was like, wow, what a cool joke. You need to be in a place to where the devil don't want you there. You need to be in a place where everybody feel threatened concerning the demonic realm when you show up. But you know what? We toxic. We can't be toxic. We got to detox. We got to be filled with the Spirit of God. So when we come into a place, we're not influenced by what Fox News say. We're not influenced by a left gay agenda that's being promoted on CNN. You know, Don Lemon, Don uh, Lemon and all those guys, bless y'all, uh, the boy with the white hair, uh, what's his name? Anderson, we love y'all, man. Them boys pushing a homosexual agenda. And they broadcast from that angle. Guys, hear what I'm saying. These guys are not just giving news. They're giving news from their angle. Their, their agenda. It's a spirit. Their perspective. Guys, hear what the spirit of God is saying. Media is a powerful tool. I'm going to give you this. and we're going, I'm, 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 I'm going to finish this part. Media is a powerful tool here. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child the way he should go. And when he is old, he would not depart from it. You know what? I don't know how they messed that scripture up. I don't know. I don't, I mean, honestly. 
You know what? For years, I heard this scripture. And when I finally read it myself, they messed it up. They were saying, you know, uh, uh, train up a child the way he should go. And when he old, he shall not depart from it. And they were saying, you know, if a child get grown up a certain way and they stray away from God or whatever, you know, that the day going to come, they're going to come back. That's not what it's saying here. This is what it's saying here. She's talking to me. It's saying train up a child the way they should go. The international version said train a child in, a, in, in the way that is appropriate for him. Let's just put that in your mind right now. Train up a child in a way that is appropriate for him in the confines of God's word. All right, can we just, just embrace that? All right, this is the second segment of it. It said, and when he becomes older, he will not, he will not turn from it. It ain't say nowhere in this scripture that he was going to turn and come back. That's the way they preached it to me. The Bible say train him up. And as he's growing up, he'll never leave it. And as he goes into old, he'll always do what's right. Somebody ain't going to come back. Because he might not come back. You want them to do right from the beginning and stay right. That's the reason we're putting forth effort right now to raise up kids the right way. Amen. With a hope they'll stay on the right path. At age 13, in Judaism, it is a young boy's bar mitzvah. At age 12, a young girl is considered a, a, a place of accountability. It's her, her bat mitzvah. And it means that she's come to a place of age accountability concerning the laws of God. So by age 12 for a girl, age 13 for a boy, that in Judaism, they consider them to be accountable for the laws of God. You know why? Because they have to stand up there. They have to recite the Ten Commandments. They have to recite Deuteronomy 6. They have to speak the word of God. And they, it, it's like inbred in them. That's why it's so hard to change Jewish minds. Because they built a certain way. That's the reason it's going to take an act of God for people that are Jewish that do not believe that Jesus, the Messiah, is going to take the hand of God to do it because they was built up in such a way that their minds are so locked in. That's what they believe. The Middle Eastern mind is more different than any mind in the earth. It's hard to change a Middle Eastern mind. Come on. Somebody. Oh, I got some hand claps. All right, so I'm telling the truth. I had somebody say it one day. They said, if you ever make a covenant with, with people from the Middle East, I, I think I heard Benny Hinn or some of these guys say, say, you ever make a covenant with somebody from the middle, middle East? He said, they believe in covenant. He said, you keep covenant. He said, because the way their minds are built, they believe in lifelong covenant. And you can see it throughout the Bible. You can see it throughout the Bible. I said, I guess I'm Middle Eastern too because I believe in covenant too. Because I serve the Jewish Jesus. And his blood flows through my veins. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying right now. As we train our children up, we train them up not believing the rubbish that's being pumped into society. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to let my kids be raised up and let Disney raise them. I'm not going to let my kids be raised up and allow what the, what, 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 see, because my kids, be walk, they be watching CNN, Fox News, they be watching everything. You know, they see what's going on. Say, what's going on with Donald Trump? What's going on with the government? What's going on with Kim Jong-un? What's going They want to know what's going on. So I have to tell them what's really going on. I'm not going to push them in a room and say, oh, you should know. And they go to school and they find out the wrong information from their friends. Yeah. Say, did you know that Kim Jong-un was going to blow the world up? And they're going to say, my daddy didn't tell me. <laughs> I don't even have to tell my kids to pray for Donald Trump. They pray for him every day. They call his name before God. And you know what? They used to pray for Barack Obama too. Because we pray for presidents. We pray for leaders. We pray for, and some of you, they call your name to the Lord every day. I hear it out of my own ears. You got issues, you ask for prayer. I know one person in specifically, every single day of their life, they pray for Jerome Harden. Every single day of their life. Without me even saying anything. That's just one to name. And they pray for God to give him a new heart and God to heal him every single day.
You can ask them behind our back, do we worship? Do we pray? Do we believe in God? They probably, but they probably think, well, I don't even know they think about it right now. They, they probably say, we pray so much. We pray coming. We pray going. We pray everywhere. Isn't that right, right? We pray everywhere. Everywhere. Get in the car, pray. We're leaving. We come back, pray. We were, last, other night, everybody was asleep. I was going back over there to push something up, and but we just broke out in prayer. I mean, instead of sleep, they was all asleep. I said, hey, let's everybody just pray. We just praying. 12 o'clock at night, going back over there, we just praying. Praying. We pray. Pray. It's an agenda. Don't believe what the world going to say. We believe God. Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's praise y'all. I know today was a different message. But I tell you this right here. You better start asking God to detox you. Because there's an agenda that's been promoted in our society. That's not the agenda of the kingdom of God. There's an agenda that's been promoted among God's people. That's not the agenda of the kingdom of God. You know a lot of people that's causing problems in the government. Are pastors and leaders that are leading groups of people. Against what they consider not to be of God. Man is that evil or corrupt? Is that evil or what? Is that evil what? I didn't see nobody lead nobody, no, no, no large groups when uh, they was building the LGBT uh, something statue. I didn't see leaders standing up walking and having marches and saying, hey, we're going to, no, Barack Obama, we want to impeach you because you're putting up LGBTQ communities. Didn't see that. Because that's the agenda of the world. That's the agenda of the world. That's the agenda of the world. We have to come against what's not of God. We have to stand with what's of God. Father, I pray that you would give us wisdom. That you would give us wisdom, Lord, to do what's right. That you would give us wisdom to say what's right. That you would give us wisdom, Lord God, to walk in what's right. That you would help us to be fair and impartial in our distribution of your love. That you would help us, Lord, to break free from the corrupt cycles that we've lived in as a result of the way that we've thought and the information that we've embraced. Lord, we know that there are a lot of injustices in the earth, but you are the God of justice. And so where there have been injustice, you will manifest and execute your justice, your judgment. We declare in Jesus' name that we are continually changing for the better. For your name's sake and for your glory. We thank you, Lord God, that we shall not be one that injure this race. But we shall be one that lift up, restore this race, this people. We believe that there is hope. Hope beyond our human comprehension. We believe that there is life that's manifesting all around us, God. I don't believe that the best days of humanity is behind us. I believe that there are greatness that's still in front of us, Lord, because we are here, and the world has yet to see the majesty, the splendor, and the unlimited greatness of our God in this earth. I pray that you would help us to be efficient in our distribution of love, Lord, that comes from our heart with purity, Father. Help us to lift those up that are broken down, those that are weak, even as the story of the Good Samaritan, help us to be Good Samaritans wherever we go, Lord. That we shall love, we shall promote the truth, and we shall do all that you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place today. Let us stand, y'all.